Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. Today is Tuesday, the 12th of March, 2019. This is episode 34. Grab some sticks and string and come knit with me. How are you guys? I am okay. Um, I'm good, actually. I'm really great. So, I'm sure I've mentioned, I know I've mentioned before, that in wintertime, I totally go into hibernation mode. I just do. And now it is feeling like springtime here. Even though it's still cold, it's sunny. And I don't know, I'm just like, wow, that, that spring burst of energy that you get, I have it. Um, so I've been spring cleaning and... I've been crafting. I don't know how I've gotten as much accomplished in this past week as I have, <laughs> but I did. Like, between the, the cleaning stuff and the crafting stuff and still managing to do all of the kid things, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm not going to argue. <laughs> so... I don't have show notes for today because I just didn't write them. I got to talking this morning and either I could record right now or I could write show notes and record tomorrow. And today seemed like a better day to do it because I think tomorrow it's supposed to be rainy, which means terrible lighting, of course. I do want to mention that um, Cattails Yarn has a coupon code in the shop, in her shop for 15% off through April 30th using the um, coupon code BUNNYFISHMKAL. It does not cover kits, but it covers everything else. And um, BUNNYFISHMKAL is all one word, all caps. Yeah, I feel like, so now that I'm talking and I don't have show notes, I'm pretty sure that I'm due for another Patreon drawing. Does that sound about right? If yes, then it will be next week. Now, on to finished objects because I have so many. Did you guys make four sweaters this week? No? Just me. Okay. I didn't make four sweaters. I worked on four sweaters. <laughs> because apparently that's who I am this week. Apparently. Um, but I do have a stack of finished objects. This is what I finished this week. Uh, and you can maybe tell that it is a lot of crochet. So first up is the caramel sweater that I made for my son um, with modifications, of course. I used size J hook, which I think was what was called for in the pattern. Maybe it was a size K. The pattern has a like a mock turtleneck which I omitted because this is his school sweater and his school shirts are polo shirts that are colored so I didn't want that I don't know I don't know if he would be weird about having that all around his neck I know I would be weird about having that all around my neck so I also did not crochet through the back loop for all of the body rounds I somehow missed that instruction. I would have done if I had caught that instruction, but I didn't catch that until I was already separated for sleeves. And by that point, I was just not, not going to rip back to do such a small detail for something he wouldn't notice. Um, other, I think that I made the ribbing around, he's already worn this. And it hasn't been washed because it's not like it smells or anything. So um, I think I made all of the cuff and bottom band. It's called ribbing, but it's not really ribbing. Um, treatments, I think I made all of them shorter. But he really, really likes it. And he has worn it only one time and then he left it in the car, of course. That's fine. I'll just put it back in his laundry basket and he can wear it tomorrow or in the near to mid future. Although in a couple days it's supposed to be 60 degrees, so he won't need it then. But I think tomorrow is still supposed to be pretty chilly. 
did I say that I used Karen one pound um, in the midnight color? I think I said marine last week and that's definitely not correct. It's in the midnight color. And I definitely have a good chunk of the skein left. So I will be using it to make Mara a sweater, possibly with something else. I don't know yet. Finished sweater number one. Which brings me then to finished sweater number two. This is called the, oh, that light is, there we go, the Aura Pullover, which is a pattern by Heidi May. And you may recall that I have made the Woodland Wolf Cowl several times now. That is also by Heidi May. So the caramel sweater was a free pattern, the Aura Pullover is a paid for pattern. And it's reasonable. It's, um, I want to say it's $5.50. It might be only $5. It might be $6. I don't remember. Right around that price point. However, like the Woodland Wolf Cowl, it goes from size 2, which is the size I made, to size 3X or something like that. So all the way from tiny human to large human. I felt that was a worthwhile investment because I am, I made this sweater for my daughter's teacher's older daughter whose birthday is on Thursday. So that's exciting. <laughs> um, she turns two, so I made the two-year-old size and I am going to make one for my daughter who is eight. I have a really cute picture of my daughter modeling this sweater, though, <laughs> this, this size 2 sweater. Um, it's meant to be an oversized pullover, but Mara looks cute with the sweater as is. And then I think I'm also going to make myself one because it's like a socially acceptable blanket. And I think I would just like one for fall and spring in lieu of a jacket. And I feel like if I make one for me, then my sister's going to want one. So that's potentially four sweaters made off of this one pattern. So I'm getting so much bang for my buck buying this sweater. Also, it's really well written. It's super clear. The instructions are really good. And it's a bajillion sizes. So go check out the Aura Pullover. Now that I've done all that... <laughs> let me let me show you again and talk about what I did. So I did not have the called for yarn, which was Bernat Softy Chunky. Um, so I ended up using Red Heart Soft Yarn and holding the strands double. I really tried to get rid of this little spot of sun. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's still there. Hopefully it'll go away soon. Um, so yeah, I held the yarn double and it's a really quick textured stitch that makes up the body and the cowl. Um, the cowl is shorter than called for in the pattern. It's supposed to be another, um, maybe another inch, but I ran out of yarn. So I used up, I had a full ball of Red Heart Soft and then I had partial ball that I had used for the um the unicorn muzzles that I just made oh my gosh I have something to say about that don't let me forget need to talk about the unicorns okay so anyway I had um a full skein and a partial skein and I used all of the yarn from it I think I have like maybe four yards left um, these buttons were just from my button stash. They were, I bought a green set of buttons from Joann's a few years ago, and I've used them for everything. <laughs> and there were four, the, it was the only set of four buttons that I had in my stash. So those are the ones that were used. They're kind of a yellowy, springy, green color. And I think that this sweater is perfect for springtime. It's just an, it's a really nice layering piece because in Michigan, which is where I live, springtime is, uh, it's very erratic with its weather. 
So it's this morning, not this morning. For instance, um, you can start out the day below freezing. So at like 28 degrees when the kids get dropped off at school. And then by the time the afternoon hits, by the time they get out, it can be 64 degrees. That's a pretty typical spring slash autumn day here. So that's a 40 degree jump over a day. Layers are important. So I just think this will be, I think this will be perfect. And it's an oversized, like boxy-ish sweater. And it worked up super, super fast. It was worked on a size P crochet hook, which is huge. So yeah, this was worked over really over two days. It On Ravelry, it says three because I did the starting row and, or like the chain and the starting row one night just to like get it out of my system that I wanted to make it. But yeah, it goes super, super fast. And there's a little speck of something on it. Okay, there we go. Really fast pattern. Um, I look forward to making the next one very soon. So I, and I plan to give, well, I plan to have Mara take these baby things to school tomorrow. Um, Cause I want to throw them through the wash today just to make sure there's no like stray dog smell or something on them. Finished sweater number three is the Eloise baby sweater. How cute is this? Okay, I know that humans come in this size. I know they do. But you forget when your little one is eight and she's like the tallest kid in her class. I mean, she's still like this big around, obviously, since she can wear a toddler sweater. But she's tall. So I know theoretically at one point in time she was the small. I mean, she was seven pounds when she was born. But you forget that they're this tiny. So this sweater, <laughs> I did a ton of modding because I had Bernat Softy Chunky, which is what that sweater called for, but it needed two skeins and I only had one skein. So I used it in this project and I, I then had to modify because my gauge was different than the pattern gauge. Um, I went down to a size H hook instead of a size J hook. And still my gauge was way looser than the gauge in the pattern. Um, I think I was getting four rows when I should have been getting five rows, but it's fine. It's just a little bit of math and I was able to figure that out. So it's worked, it's a free pattern. You can either find it on Ravelry or search it. It's a blog post um, by, I want to say Moogly Crochet, M-O-O-G-L-Y. So the you actually work the skirt first. You work it in this direction, so back and forth. And you see you work through the back loop to make ridges. I think you can kind of see that. Um, and then you pick up and work the top, the yoke, and then you do the sleeves last. I really, really like this. And I'm also planning on making one of these for Mara, but obviously in a larger size. I think I'm going to make this in the navy and just make it short sleeved so she can wear it basically the whole school year um, over her uniform shirt and either uniform pants or a skirt. I think that would be so cute on her, but I think it's also so cute in this sweater. So this yarn is Bernat Softy Chunky, but the purple is Red Heart Brava Worsted. I didn't hold a double, I just held it singly. So you can see, maybe you can see, that it's much more airy than the um, the Softy Chunky. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, babies are, it's socially acceptable for babies to have naked body parts hanging out. So I think that'll be fine. I just really liked the purple with this cream color and I didn't want to hold a double. Just didn't. It does have 
So it doesn't carry the yarn. So there are all of these ends. I just crocheted the ends in as I went. Um, but if you are not a person who does that, you will have to handle all of those ends eventually. I just think ends are so easy to work in immediately when you're crocheting. So yeah, this is the this is her sweater for the new baby who's coming. Um, these buttons were also just in my stash and I didn't have any purple and I was looking for maybe a gray or something but then I saw these two brown buttons and I thought that the brown was really cute with the purple and these are cut off of something. It says uh, place established 1989. I don't know what they're cut off of but I cut them off of something so they have a new life in this sweater. And then because I just couldn't stop with the baby making, I made this little headband. Um, I didn't follow a pattern. I did find a measurement for head circumference for a newborn and made the headband accordingly. And then just kind of made up a flower. I didn't use a pattern for that either. Just kind of made it up and then stitched it on. And this will go with this dress. Mostly I just wanted to use up more of that yarn, but I have not a ton left, probably like a quarter of the skein of this and then this much purple. I'm just going to take them and give them to the knit club this evening. I don't need them anymore. It's fine. If I need purple or white, I can always go and get more purple or cream. Um, I did also finish for the baby this blanket. So last week I had this much approximately finished and I just finished squaring it off and then I did a sort of a quick shell border on it just to finish it off because crochet edges are kind of like wonky. They just are. It's the nature of the stitches because you're making knots. So just a little border on it. And yeah, as you can tell, <laughs> crocheting goes really, really fast. If these were knit items, I definitely wouldn't have finished three sweaters and a blanket. In a week even though the blink was already started and one of the sweaters was started um i'm really really pleased with it this is bernat a bernat baby yarn i don't remember now did i write it down last week i feel like i did let's look at that baby blanket bernat softy baby in the princess pebbles colorway and this was worked with what a size i hook a size j something like that i don't know it's a corner to quarter pattern i just worked it um off the tutorial so there's not a real pattern to go with it so this is also going in the washing machine and then they will go to the baby and not the baby next week oh let me talk about this before i forget so before no, I'm going to set it here. I'm going to finish talking about finished objects first. So finished objects. <laughs> the last one that I have is this pair of socks. It is just a vanilla sock with fish lips kiss heel. It is Patton's Croy in the rose brown marl colorway. Um, it was 50 something stitches because Patton's Croy is a like a light sport heavy fingering weight yarn. I worked it on US size one, 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, yeah, and whatever the stitch circumference was for the sock, I worked that many rounds and then 10 more rounds for both the foot and the leg before starting cuffs and stuff. Did one by one rib at the top and um, my hair is all over it per usual. And then I did a, I think it's called a tubular bind off. It's where on the setup round before 
you fin like your your very last round, you knit the knit stitches onto one needle, purl the purl stitches onto another needle, and then once you get back to the beginning, you kitchener the knits and the purls like you would closing a sock, and it makes a really neat bind off edge. Let's see if I can show you. Why not? So it makes that. Yeah, you can see. It's really, really neat. It's pretty stretchy. And these are for my niece for Christmas because that uh, sweater shawl sock knit along is motivating me to work on all of the Christmas socks. All of the Christmas socks. You'll see. You'll see in a minute. But first, look at this. This came for me in the mail. There's a fingerprint on it. Um, yesterday, but I just opened it this morning right before recording. Oh my gosh, you guys. So you remember when I was making faces about making knee-high socks for this sister-in-law that I hadn't met? Well, I still haven't met her, but she is also a crafty person, and she painted this tumbler for me. Look at how beautiful that is. Sorry there's the no, I can't get away from the reflection of that window. I'm sorry. Um, it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. And it has my name on the back. So nobody can be confused that it's for me. It's so, so pretty. Um, yeah, I. this is totally worth a knee-high pair of socks. Totally. Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. I love it so, so much. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yep. So yeah. Oh, and I talked to her this morning to thank her for it. And, um, she told me that one of the, one of the girls who got a unicorn, her birthday is coming up next month. And she was like, I know it's really short notice, but could you maybe make a thing for her? So I'm going to be making a thing for my niece, um, coming up. <laughs> before next month or you know it's like a month from this weekend basically so I'm gonna make something I don't know what yet we have to discuss but apparently this is why I said yes the reason I said yes is because this particular niece has carried the unicorn with her everywhere like the unicorn even goes to school in her backpack that's so cute. That's so cute. That makes me want to make more things when people are knit worthy like that. My kids don't love the things I made them like that. Like, obviously, my son wore his sweater and then he left it in the car for a week. Sad trombone. That's fine. It's fine. So I'll be making another child thing. I don't know if I am going to... She likes... The little girl likes mermaids and unicorns and that sort of thing. So I don't know if I want to make her a another toy. I mean, I know that like deep down I don't want to make another toy because I don't make don't enjoy making toys. However, I might make her another toy, but I'm open to other suggestions of makeable things. What do you think? Like, I'm kind of thinking how cute would this pullover, the, the aura pullover be for, you know, an eight-year-old, but like in mermaidy colors. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that, or there are a ton of really great unicorn patterns because her mom was like, even if you just make her a second unicorn, um, which I could do. Or there's other unicorn patterns, and there's, you know, tons of mermaid patterns. I just don't know what I want to make right now. If you have suggestions for what to make, you know, eight, nine-year-old girls for toys, totally open to ideas. Um, and then I will be running them by my sister-in-law soon to see. So yeah, let me know what you think. Um, okay, works in progress. 
Oh, I have to stop working on the sweater now because I am to an increase round. Not increase, decrease round. I know the difference, I promise. In my head, I know the difference. Okay, I guess I don't have to work on it. I'm just gonna have to look down when I make those decreases. So this is my $5 in Paris. Last week I was still in the ribbing and I'm not super far in the sweater, but I am not not far in the sweater either. I have split for the sleeves and I even finished the sleeves just so they would be done to make it easier to try on instead of having them on waist yarn. And the, the sleeves are so short anyway, they're just little cap, not cap, Sleeve. I don't know, are they cap sleeves? I always get confused on what the actual definition of it is, and I could just look, but I'm not going to. So they have little tiny sleeves. Um, they, it, it, it is one singular sweater. The sleeves are plural and they are short. <laughs> okay. Ooh, speaking sometimes. So yeah, I have sleeves. I have, I know it looks small, but I promise I've tried it on. It, You know why it looks small? Because this gathers in, but when it is on my shoulders, it's actually much wider. The, um, the neckline fits really, really well. So the going down to half the stitch count and then increasing to twice the amount on the first row worked out really, really well. The ribbing is beautiful, but it's still not too loose in the um in the neck band i am right around the boob the bottom of the boob area for sweater length i do want this to be kind of a tunic length or even maybe a sweater dress length we'll see how far the yarn takes me i'm still on the first two balls though I didn't weigh them, so I don't know how much percentage-wise I have, but I have about this much left of the first two balls. Um, I am alternating skeins. I did the full top ribbing in one skein, and then I used the other skein to do the ribbing on the sleeves. I'm going to put on some chaps really quick because I just found it. And um, whenever I find chapstick, I feel compelled to put it on because my lips are not chapped, but kind of they're thinking about maybe being chapped. Does that happen to anybody else? This is actually not my chapstick. This is my daughter's chapstick, but I've confiscated it because she didn't even notice I took it. The yarn that I am using for my sweater is Wool Fiend in the Fangorn colorway. It is so beautiful. It's, oh, I love it so, so much and I can't wait to wear it. And I'm still tentatively planning on finishing this by St. Patty's Day, which is Sunday and it's Tuesday. I can totally do this um, because I don't have any of those projects on my mind <laughs> this week. And, uh, yeah, even though crochet is fast, it still takes time to make these things. So now I can put forth the effort into this sweater instead and maybe finish it by Sunday. We'll see. Hopefully I'm wearing it next week when I'm on the podcast. But yeah, I've made, you know, that's that's pretty decent progress from the neck ribbing. It's not insignificant. So if I focus on this, I can probably finish it by Sunday. I So the pattern I'm using is $5 in Paris by Anna Malazuski, and I <laughs> am making modifications. I went up to the largest size for stitch count because I'm using a smaller weight of yarn and smaller needles, but it seems to be working just fine. I'm just making the largest size and it fits, so that's good. When I made the original sweater, I made a size medium. Okay, so works in progress. <laughs> Other works in progress, I should say. I have many. Um, inside the Mama C's bag right here with the dragonflies, that's still the shawl. I 
I'm so close to finished. I have one section left to go so that I can officially, officially have it finished and have the yardage requirements for sure down to the gram. But I broke the needles. I am using wooden needles in that project and I had it sitting on my bed. I didn't even get out of my bed. I leaned off of my bed to get something that had fallen on the floor and I just put my hand down on the needle right here. I put my hand down like this on the needle and snapped the needle. So I need to get another needle and I am planning whether my sister is coming or not to go to the knit group this coming week. So I will pick up a needle tomorrow and then that shawl will be finished very shortly after. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe Thursday, but all of that should be finished very, very quickly. I have already started, let's talk about the shawl for a minute because why not? I have started typing up the Ravelry um, pattern page. Like, you know, when you go to a pattern page to buy the pattern or download the pattern, there's all that information. I have most of that information in. I still want to add exact yardage for because there's going to be a cowl version which takes less yarn. So I want to have that information in case you want to participate but you don't necessarily have 20 gram mini skeins. Um, that way you can have a better idea for if a yarn will work in place of one of those. That should be up um, definitely by next podcast and you'll be able to pre-order the pattern there. So the pattern also will be a little bit discounted up until the knit along starts. I did tweak the start date just a little bit. Um, May starts on a Wednesday and I want to start on April 29th that Monday because I'm going to release it one clue every weekday. It's gonna it's going to run for five weeks, not because there's that many clues. Um, you'll get all of the clues for like most of the knitting there will be over the first four weeks and then the fifth week there will be one last clue um, for knitting and then one clue for finishing and then you'll have until the end of the week to post um, to post a picture I don't think that I'm going to require you to finish knitting because life gets busy and a month for some people is plenty of time to knit a shawl but it's not necessarily enough time for everybody to knit a shawl so yeah it'll close at the end of the fifth week for prizes cat is going to donate a prize um a skein of yarn which she will send me i uh, i told her to wait because i'm planning on placing an order with her because I need another skein of the Black Aja yarn, my main color. I'm obsessed with it and I need a skein for me to just use for me. And I know that was a lot of information that I just threw at you, but it will all be in the Ravelry group. Um, I'll have links to the pattern page and everything, I'll have links. So that I'm so excited <laughs> for that knit along, I'm so excited so excited okay other works in progress i have three pairs of socks going right now this one is the least exciting <laughs> um it is just a patton's croy sock worked on us size ones uh 50 i think this is a 56 stitch sock and the colorway is Coastal Stripes. So it's just blue, stripey, vanilla goodness. It'll have a fish lips kiss heel in it. It's for one of my nephews. And yeah, it's just, it's a plain, boring, sorry to everybody who likes vanilla, um, boring sock. But it will be really, really good for um, work because I can walk around and knit at the same time. Um, 
I just, I basically just started it so I would have a project that I can leave in my car right now because everything else I was working on took too much um, focus. So it's, I got stopped by a train once and I, yeah, I just worked on it in the car. Nothing really important about it. Um, I do have my beautiful bell stitch marker on it just cause for excitement because I love it. So yeah, this is, this is my least prioritized sock right now. It's just, I cast it on, um, last week. It was one of the socks that I had cast on that I didn't show you, but I did make, you know, a couple inches of progress. So I figured I'd bring it cause why not? And then it's going to go live back in my car for those moments when I get stuck at really, really long stoplights or at railroad crossings, things like that. Um, Next up is the sock for my son, and it is the Golden Ticket Pattern by Lisa K. Ross. This is what it looks like. Oh, I think you can see the patterning on it a little better this week. Yeah. So there is a panel down here and then a main body pattern, and I am in that. I'm actually, um, it's got a flegal heel in it, so I am in the middle of turning that flegal heel into an actual heel. Um, normally, I would attach yarn from the other side to do the heel, but I forgot. I am considering breaking the yarn after this stripe and using from the other side so that I don't mess up the striping sequence too too much on the front but I don't know I might just let it go I might just not worry about it because the striping I mean it's got an obvious I think I don't know, should I rip back the stripe so that the striping sequence can be the same and work? No, I'm not gonna rip back. I will cut the yarn and work from the outside of the ball to finish the heel and then continue on with this yarn from this stripe to keep the striping sequence the same on the front because I feel like it'll be super noticeable. Now that I'm really looking at it, it'll be super noticeable if the brown section is not there. Okay, we've decided. Anyway, this is the first sock. I should have this first sock finished next week. I would like to have the first sock finished and have a decent start on the second sock so that I can get these finished by the end of the month. Um, but now that I have this brocade, it's called a brocade stitch in the pattern. Now that I have the brocade stitch memorized, it's just, it's zoom zoom. Even though I'm going to be working it on the front and the back of the sock of the leg, it's still going to go really fast. So that is that. And this is Premier Serenity sock in the gray flannel colorway. The last pair of socks I have is the most exciting because it's going to be finished first. And did I show you bags? Can I show you bags? I know I'm so bad about showing bags. So the headband was in this Hooked by Happenstance mermaid bag. So cute. The car knitting bag forever and ever is going to be, or, you know, until I get a new one, um, the ZK 2017 Silver Shed USA bag. My sweater is in my kitchen counter crafter bag. The golden ticket socks are in my Fates Thread Sailor Moon, ba Sailor Moon bag. And then this last pair of socks is in this Hooked by Happenstance bag. I feel like this is probably meant to be a notions pouch and not a project bag, but... <laughs> I'm still using it as a project bag. So I am doing these socks that are coordinating. I did the cuffs. I don't even know if I had these last week. I did not show them last week. Okay, that's right. Because last week all I had was like the cast on round 
the cast on one round on one sock and the cast on in four rounds on the other sock. So these are my work knitting projects right now. I'll show you this one first actually because this one I can't take to work today. So I am doing a cuff down Rose City roller. Um, I have not referenced the pattern because I made them once and I took a whole bunch of notes and they fit really well. So I am just referencing my notes instead. And I think there's like some detailing on the sole of the foot in the actual pattern that I didn't use. So anyway, <laughs> this is, um, and the yarn is from Cattails Yarn. So this is the Unicorn Poop colorway and this is Mermaid Song. So here is the first sock. And I am completely out of the sparkle yarn. I'm pretty sure the sparkle yarn has slightly less yardage than the non-sparkle yarn. I don't know if I still have that tag. No, I don't. I dropped the tag for the sparkle yarn at the movies. Oh, so we went and saw How to Train Your Dragon 3 Hidden World on Sunday. And I took this knitting with me. Oh my gosh, that movie was so good. It was so so good. So good. I cried. And Gabriel cried. And my boyfriend cried. Mara was not with us. She was with my mom. So she would not have cried. She's not a crier. <laughs> but we cried. It was good. So this is the... I got through probably halfway through this and then took it to work and worked on it. And then yesterday... I went to the park and took a walk, even though it was still cold. I still went to the park and took a walk, and it was amazing. And this is what I worked on. And then I ran out of the sparkle yarn, which is fine. I'm just going to set this one aside. I have four rounds to go on this one before I start the toe. So instead, I picked up the second sock, which I had been working on at the movies, um, because at one point I dropped the, I dropped this sock. It was in like the middle of the movie. I went to the restroom. I dropped my sock in the theater. And I was like, well, I guess I'll just work on the other sock and find this sock when the lights come up. So that's what I did. So this sock is, has much more work to go on it, but, um, I'm probably going to finish this. Maybe not today, but definitely by Friday, I will have worked all the way through this sock, or at least to the toe, because I don't think that I would be comfortable working on the toes at school because I'm going to have to use double points because all of my circs are in other projects. If I was working on two nine inch circulars for the toe, I could do it at school because they're not going to fall out, but I'll just do the toes at home. It's fine. Um, anyway, so my plan is to work this sock to the toe and then see how, if I have yarn left or work as close as I can to the toe and run out of this yarn. And then I'm probably going to use um, the blue Aja colorway from Cattails Yarn because I have some left over after designing. And I think I'm going to finish the socks like that so that it's all cattails yarns and the blue aja is like a light blue but i think it'll still look nice with these colors yeah that's my plan for these socks so these will for sure be finished next time i see you i'm so excited i have i don't know how i made this much crafting project in progress in a week that's so much now that i'm like actually looking at it so much. Good job, me. Hopefully this week is also really productive. Who knows? Um, it should be because my kids will not be here this weekend. They will be with their dad and I don't even have to drive them down there because I don't know if you've heard, if you've been hearing a snoring in the background. I should have mentioned it earlier, but I didn't. My best friend is on spring break from college and she is sleeping <laughs> in my daughter's room right now. Um, so she's visiting for spring break and I'm doing that decrease that I said I was gonna have to look down for. Um, so she's here, but she lives with their dad. 
So she is going to drive them down on Friday. So I don't even have to do that initial drive. I still have to drive on Sunday to meet up, but that's a whole six hours that I'm not losing like I normally do every month. So I think, I really, really think that I can knock out this sweater and, uh, and those socks, at least one more pair of socks. You know, at least the shorty socks should be done and then good progress on everything else. Oh, this is, I'm, I'm really hoping that this is also going to be a very productive, crafty week. Anyway, that's all my ramblings that I got for you this week. Um, if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. If you feel so inclined, go check out Patreon. I have heard back from some of my patrons expressing that they really, really like the postcards that I made. So that's super exciting. I haven't done a lot of paper crafting this past week, but I really, I'm like, I'm feeling the itch to make some affirmation cards or postcards or something. I feel like that's going to happen maybe this weekend, which will, you know, cut into my knitting crafting time, but it's still crafty. It's fine. So I think I'm going to do that a little bit. And, um, and maybe I'll remember to show them next week. Who knows? Who knows what I'll remember and what I forget happens. Anyway, like, subscribe, you know, the, the thumbs up button helps other people find the podcast and subscribing helps people find the podcast. And it also delivers my videos directly to you, which is really, really nice. Um, go join the Ravelry, Ravelry group if you feel like it. We're not super chatty over there, but we have discussions every once in a while, and that's always nice. I love hearing from you guys in the comments. Yeah, so that was like, I said goodbye and like kept talking for a minute and a half. <laughs> it's so hard to say goodbye and actually mean it. Okay, for reals, I'm going to go so I can edit this and get it out to you. And I will do my very, very best to see you next week. Bye.